Welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this space for the first time, you are also highly welcome. This is quiz time. We're looking at some structured questions that are related to the bony pelvics. I've done a lecture on the bony pelvics. You should go and check that lecture up before you take this quiz. And if you are able to select the correct answers, it sure means that you have capacity to attempt questions adequately that are related to the bony pelvics in any examination. The first question on the bony pelvics is, the best type of pelvics for vaginal beds is the anthropoid pelvics, is it the android pelvics? the gynecoid pelvics, or the platypeloid pelvics. Which of these pelvics best suits vaginal beds? Then the second question is, the bony pelvic is structurally made up of the following, except is it the sacrum? Is it the right and the left hip bones? Is it the fifth lumbar vertebra? Or is it the cossex? So one of these structures is not part of the bony pelvics. The third question is the greater sciatic notch is an indentation on, is it on the ilium, is it on the pubic, is it on the ischium, or is it on all of the elbows? The fourth question states that the pubic symphysis can be classified as, the pubic symphysis we know is a joint that is created in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity. So this joint can structurally be classified as, is it a primary cartilaginous joint, is it a fibrous joint? Is it a synovial type of joint? Or is it a secondary cartilaginous joint? The fifth question is the pubic heart is formed by, is the pubic heart formed by the superior pubic rami? Is it formed by the ischial rami? Is it formed by the inferior pubic rami? Or is it formed by all of the elbows? The sixth question states that the sacroiliac joint connects the sacrum to the pubic bone the sacroiliac joint is a primary cartilaginous joint. The sacroiliac joint transmits the weight from the upper part of the body to the bony pelvis. And the last one is the sacroiliac joint is a sanatrodial type of joint. The seventh question states that the acetabulum is formed by all of the following except, is it formed by the pubic bone? Is it formed by the ilium? Is it formed by the ischium? or is it formed by the sacrum? Which of these does not contribute to the formation of the acetabulum? The eighth question states that the orientation of the pelvic inlet is formed by the following, except the sacral promotory, the wing of the sacrum, is it the iliopectineal line, or is it the iliac crest? The ninth question states that the obliterator for a man is transformed into the obliterator canal by the obliterator membrane. The obliterator foramen is formed by the pubic and the ischial rami. The obliterator foramen is located at the anterior lateral side of the pelvic cavity, or is it all of the above? The tenth question states that the orientation of the pelvic outlet is formed by the following except the upper border of the pubic symphysis, the pubic heart, the ischial tuberosity or the tip of the cossex. The 11th question here reads that the lesser sciatic notch is an indentation on, is it an indentation on the pubic? Is it an indentation on the ischium? Is it an indentation on the ilium? Or is it an indentation on the sacrum? The 12th question reads that the bony alignment of the obliterator foramen is formed by is it formed by the superior and the inferior pubic rami? Is it formed by the right and the left ischial rami? Is it formed by the pubic and the ischial rami? Or is it none of the above? So let's go through these answers to evaluate what we have done so far. So the answer to the first question, the best type of pelvics for vaginal bed is the gynecoid pelvis. So this is the pelvis that has a configuration that suits vaginal beds. The second question, the bony pelvis is structurally made up of the following, except the fifth lumbar vertebra. This is the only structure that does not form part of the bony pelvis. The third question is the greater sciatic notch is an indentation that is created on the ilium. 
It is on the ileum that we have this indentation created. And we know that this greater sciatic notch will further be transformed into the greater sciatic foramen by the sacrospinous ligament. We've highlighted this also in our lecture on the bony pelvis. The answer to the fourth question, which states that the pubic symphysis is classified as what type of joint? The pubic symphysis is classified as a secondary cartilaginous joint. The fifth question, which states that the pubic heart is formed by? The pubic heart is formed by the inferior pubic rami. So this is the correct answer out of all the listed. The sixth question, the sacroiliac joint. The correct answer here is that the sacroiliac joint transmits the weight of the upper part of the body to the bony pelvis. The answer to the seventh question, the acetabulum is formed by all of the following except except the sacrum. The sacrum does not contribute to the formation of the acetabulum. The three structural components of the hip bone are seen to contribute to the formation of the acetabulum. And this include the pubic, the ileum, and also the ischium. This question, which states that the orientation of the pelvic inlet is formed by all of the following, except, except the iliac crest. The iliac crest does not contribute to the alignment of the pelvic inlet. So we should go and check this up. This question, which states that the obliterator foramen is, all of the above is correct in this question. So it is transformed into the obliterator canal by the obliterator membrane. It is also formed by the pubic and the ischia rami, and it is located at the anterior lateral side of the pelvic cavity. So all of the above is the correct option here. And the answer to the 10th question, which states that the orientation of the pelvic outlet is formed by the following, except the upper border of the pubic symphysis. The upper border of the pubic symphysis is seen to form the configuration of the pelvic inlet. While the pelvic heart lays specifically, it is the lower border of the pubic symphysis that is responsible for the formation of this alignment. So we should be able to distinguish the upper and the lower border and also know the specific region that contributes to the formation of the pelvic heart lays. It is the lower border of the pubic symphysis that is seen to contribute to this. The answer to question 11, the lesser sciatic notch is an indentation on, it is an indentation on the ischium. It is the lesser sciatic notch that is further transformed into the lesser sciatic foramen by the sacrotuberous ligament. The 12th question that reads, the bony alignment of the obliterator foramen is formed by what? This bony alignment that is referred to as the obliterator foramen is formed by the pubic and the ischia rami. It is these two rami that contribute to the formation of the obliterator foramen. So thanks for going through this section, and I hope that you did well. Let's have your grades in the comment section.